most exciting thing was just being in that environment and being around those cars and being around the people who lived and breathed the, the performance of an automobile. And, and Shelby just happened to have about the fastest one in town and proved that on and off the racetrack. Tom McIntyre. I'm the uh, president of ASCO Products. Before Shelby, yes, I, uh, well, the consummate car guy. I started saving money to buy my first car when I was nine and bought it when I was 14. So um, I, I always wanted cars. I always liked cars, everything about them. I wanted to be an engineer, so I pursued an engineering career. I uh, took obviously engineering classes, but I also took like metal casting and things that were just fascinating to me, machining, all the aspects of, of, of producing a product. So I, I got it in my head that I think producing products sounded like a lot of fun. I veered off course in, in college and started taking classes that were like business classes and other things that would, would support not being an engineer. So uh, ultimately, I did graduate from Cal Poly with an engineering degree, um, but with lots of, uh, lots of side courses in, in how to do things. My father was a salesman, and he sold aircraft rivets and uh, nuts and bolts and screws to the aircraft industry. While he was with Hughes Aircraft making sales, he looked over his shoulder and saw this place that was making looked like high performance automobiles. So he stopped in, surely they would need rivets and fasteners. So, so he stopped in there. This is probably 1966 or 67. He got to talking to the guys over there and, and they said, well, yeah, but you wouldn't know anybody that would know how to make nameplates, would you? So he called me up that night and said, uh, you know, you've been learning how to make things, you know, casting metal and so on and so forth. Do you think you could make a nameplate? And I said, well, I don't know why not. That sounds pretty easy to me. So, uh, so he went back there and he said, you know, I think I might be able to help you with these nameplates. Went to class at school and, and ended up making, you know, samples of things. Started doing drawings. I started sending the drawings home and my dad would run them over there and show them and talk to them and be the, the communication link. But anyway, they came up with all kinds of ideas. Well, we need this and we need that. Is that something you could help us with? And uh, it ended up being, you know, really challenging. So ultimately, I ended up coming up with a design of a, of a product that, that, that ended up being something that was very exciting for us to uh, create a, a hold down hood pin, if you will, for an automotive hood so you couldn't take the parts off of it. But it was also fairly stylish. So Shelby looked at it and said, well, we'd, we'd like to have that. So anyway, that became my senior thesis. It was a two year project on how to design a part for a car, a high performance car, actually. The badges and nameplates uh, ended up being something that, that we, we made all of the badges for Shelby ultimately. Um, everything he ever used. We met all the people, uh, we met all the Ford folks. The interesting thing about, you know, in, in talking with Shelby and the, and the group in, in 67, they, they uh, had changed and were looking for badge makers and ended up um, producing different badges for the 1967 car. We had walked in the door at that point, so that there was a real interest in, you know, they were kind of flat, a little more decal looking. And they said, you know, we, we really would like to have some real serious three dimension. I had worked with a, a man, a Swedish fellow named Ib Sorensen, who set up shop in, in my building. And while the drawings that, that we made were flat, two-dimensional drawings, you know, a pencil lead on a piece of paper doesn't have 3D to it. Ebe Sorensen was a, a real artist. He was able to take this 2D drawing and bring it to life. He was actually able to use his pantograph machine and alter the depth and, and, and create the three-dimensional shape of the Shelby snake that was being used the dies that you see here are, are Ebe's uh, products. These, uh, 
uh, are pieces that uh, are the actual steel components that went into a molding machine, a, a zinc die casting machine is what it was. I bought a little one and, and tried to learn how to use it. It was just comical, but uh, we really had fun learning how to do all this stuff. And anyway, we would make these dies and these actually received the molten metal. So you would close this up, you would put it in the machine, you would clamp it real tight. Um, you had six or 700 degree molten metal on, in a big pot underneath it and then you would hit the button and uh, squirted the metal and it would go blowing into the cavities and produce a nameplate shape. We then had to take those shapes and cut them, sand the edges and polish them and make them ready for bright chrome plating and then uh, make ready for paint. That was our basic process. Cast the metal, uh, deburr, polish, clean, shine it all up and then splash some chrome plating on it. Not so easy, but that's what we did. And then learn, learning how to spray paint. We were doing all that in, in, a, in basically a one room facility. Ford was always calling and saying, you know, we need parts tomorrow. So we would work every day and, and it was really fun uh, when the raw castings came and how we were going to trim them and polish them. And we had people that worked there and they realized that, you know, we just aren't getting this done. And so the next thing I know, their wives are there with them. They brought them from home and said, we need some help. Can you come help us? So it was a real, uh, real, real interesting uh, time. And everybody was so excited about the product and excited about uh, doing the work that was actually showing up on the highways and you could go see it and touch it. and. Uh, uh, we were, we were just, just, we couldn't have been happier to have the kind of spirit that existed uh, in, in our, our little business in those days. It was really super fun. That really was very exciting to, to actually see what was going on in, in the background while I was, while I was busy, you know, uh, designing and, and, and working with some of the other people on the nameplates. So just being there was, was enough for me. <laughs> pushed me over the brink. Well, the memory uh, that I, I guess it, it continues to haunt me today is, is the 427 Cobra. Um, that, that was something that, it, it just ended up being the, the second to none automobile, in my opinion. Being a product of the 60s, the Cobra being a product of the 60s, and myself being a product of the 60s, I couldn't not have one. Very fortunately, very early on, I mean, within three or four years, I bought a Cobra. Just from making my little na nameplates and emblems and things like that for Shelby, I ended up with a Cobra, and it remains with me today. It probably is the most exciting part of the journey. Well, you know, the, the fact that I loved cars so much really Made, made every day a pleasure. Being able to start my, my business career with Shelby and, and Ford was probably just a dream come true for a, a, a kid who loved cars as much as I did. Being able to do that and seeing the expansion and enjoying some of the things that were happening in the 60s, building all of these parts, using these dyes, spraying the paint with the masks, you know, that, that's been 55 years since, uh, since we began our relationship with Shelby. It, it enabled me to do what I do today. It enabled me to look to the future. It, it enabled me to actually expand my personal life in so many ways, learning how to race cars and enjoying the performance of the cars that I helped build. And gee, it just, uh, it just was a childhood's dream come true.